Assalamu alaikum, family. We gonna give it about one more minute and we gonna jump in. We're not gonna be as long tonight. I mean, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam. Glad to have you in the house. Yes, sir. Glad to be here. It's definitely going to be lit. No, we know you about to go in, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all about to go in. <laughs> yes, Ms. Mala, we're going to go ahead and start with the opening. Of course, we're going to start with our four short surahs. Bismillah, min rahim A'udhu billahi min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. La hawla wa la kuwata ila bilahi wa huwa liyul adhim. Bismillah, min rahim al-fatiha. Bismillah, min rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki Omidin, Yakana Budua Yakana Stain, Edina Sarata Mustakim, Sarata Ladin and Abda Lehem, Gairo Mahdubi Alehem Walla Dalim, Amin. Bismillah, Mela Rahim, Alhamdulillah, he rappel Alameen, A Rahman, a Rahim, Maliki Omidin, Yakana Budua Yakana Stain, Edina Sarata Mustakim. Surat al-Adin and Abda al-Ayhim, Khairu Mahdubi al-Ayhim wa al-Adalim. Ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, maliki al-Medin, iyaq nabudu wa iyaq nasta'in, idina surat al-Mustaqim, surat al-Adin and Abda al-Ayhim, Gairu mahdubi alayhim wa la talim. Ameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka nabudu wa iyakum nasta'in. Iyidina al-sarata al-mustaqim. Sirata al-adina nabda alayhim. Gairu mahdubi alayhim. Walla Dalim Amin Sarat al Iklas Bismillah Mela Rahim Kul Hualahu Ahad Allah Usamad Lam Yalid Walam Yalad Walam Yakula who Kufu on Ahad Bismillah Mela Rahim Kul Hualahu Ahad Allah Usamad Lam Yalid Walam Yalad Walam Yakula who Kufu on Ahad Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, kulhu wallahu ahad, Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulahu kufu an ahad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, kulhu wallahu ahad, Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulahu kufu an ahad. Sarat al-Falak. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kulaud rabbu falak min shari ma khalak wa min shari gasgini dawakab wa min shari nafathat filukat wa min shari hasdini dahasat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kulaud rabbu falak min shari ma khalak 
Wamin share and gas the guinea da wakab. Wamin share in affetats of Ilukat. Wamin share rehas the dini da hasad. Bismillah, men of Rahim. Gulahu the barapo falak. Min share remalkalak. Wamin share regas the guinea da wakab. Wamin share in affetats of Ilukat. Wamin share rehas the dini da hasad. Bismillah, men of Rahim. Kulahu du barapa falak, min share rima khalak, wa min share rigas tikini da wakab, wa min share rinafatat tafilukad, wa min share rihasta dini da hasad. Sarat al nas. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kulahu du barapa nas, maliki nas, Allahi nas. Min share rewas wasil khanas, aladi yuwas we supi sudurinas, min aljinati wanas, smilah min rahim kula u dubarapanas, malikinas in lahinas, min share rewas wasil khanas, aladi yuwas we supi sudurinas, min aljinati wanas, bismillah min rahim kula u dubarapanas. Maliki nas ilahi nas min share alwas wasil khanas aladi yuwas we supi sudurin nas min al jannati wa nas bismillah rahman rahim kulau the barapa nas maliki nas ilahi nas min share alwas wasil khanas aladi yuwas we supi sudurin nas min al jannati wa nas Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatihi lima ublika wa katimi lima sabaka. Nasir al-Haqi wa haqi wa hadi ila saratika mustaqim. Wa ala alihi haqa kajrihi wa migdarihi al-Ladim. O Allah, send your barakas. Upon this Dara, send your barakas upon all of us who are gathered together today on this phone as we're making ready to go and be present at the retreat this weekend. Lead, provide, and guide for all of us that the journey is easy. Open our minds and our hearts to receive what is being given tonight in the form of teaching that we may better understand the science of the numbers, the science of the, and the science that is deposited in each and every one of us to better ourselves, our environment, and all that is around us. Barke Sheikh Ahpudubamba, Barke Sheikh Ibrafal, Barke Serene Fala, Barke Serene Sally Hu, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba, Barke Sheikh Sufi Ba. Amin, Amin, Amin. Assalamu alaikum, family. Alaikum, Assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Ameen, ameen. Good to hear y'all. Everybody ready for the retreat? All roads lead to Georgia. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, my, my brother Shane. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of y'all present and accounted for. It's gonna be a grand, grand time. So tonight, well, we got stuff out of whack here. Tonight, we're going to go back into these numbers, living divine between the one and the nine. And last week, we dealt with one through three. This week, we kicking off with number four. And brief recap, 
I'm going to use some class participation on this. Who can tell me one or two things about the number? Well, let's start with zero. Who can tell me one or two things about the symbol zero? I know y'all know. It's may Allah uh, say the, with the zero, with the zero be a portal. Portal, absolutely. The portal, the void, the darkness from which we all emerge into that number one. I know everybody knows something about the number one. Bismillah. Bismillah. Bismillah, just the number one. Um, you know what? You kind of you brought out a lot of uh, you brought out a lot when you were talking about like the matrix code. We were talking about the matrix code. So um, one is like uh, it's just a single unit. But mm -hmm. my my comment for real is yeah about like how it relates to zero mm -hmm. and different building blocks for basically everything. That's that's my comment. I really love that we uh, pulled that out. Awesome, I mean, great. Yes, that one, first of all, of course, it represents the Aleph in the alphabet. And it is the first or the beginning stage emerging into existence. Just like you said, that's what the number one represents. How about that number two? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa well, alaikum uh, salam. The two represents duality. Now we're getting polarized. Also, ah. you mentioned that it looked like a, a, a man in prayer. Yes. I mean, duality, splitting that one into two. It also represents the ba in the Arabic language letter system then we get to the number three and i'm sure everybody ready to chime in on this one assalamu alaikum shaykh wa alaikum salam and family yeah the number three that's my number uh ah, ah. representing the beginning middle and end yes of all things and the trinity Yes. Trinity. Very good. <laughs> the <laughs> Trinity. Mm -hmm. We got that answer from a number three indeed. So yes, the three represent all of those things as well as the jeem in the Arabic letter system. So that brings us to the number four. Number four. Four represents the doll in the Arabic letters. And this number has some treasures, of course. One of them is found in the Fatiha of the Holy Quran, the first chapter. And when we look at the first chapter, we look at the fourth verse. And the fourth ver verse is master of the day of judgment. That's what the number four represents, master. Four symbolically speaks very much to mastery because looking at it from a symbolic perspective, I don't know if anyone has ever pointed this out, but if we're going from the zero to the four, in those four spaces, you go from a circle to a square. 
the four corners, the foundation, the platform, the structure that we stand on. Then later on, if you go another four from the four to the eight, you really have infinity where you can find two circles put together there. So the journey from the zero to the four, it becomes a square. From the four to the eight, it becomes infinity in two circles. That's the journey of the four. And of course that journey is infinite. Talking about our journey being infinite. Four is where we begin to establish ourselves. We came from the zero into oneness subdivided into two. Then we have the Trinity, father, mother, son, father, mother, daughter, that divine Trinity. Now we're getting the foundation under our feet. We're getting grounded to move forward into the next phase of this numeric process. So that's what the four represent in terms of that journey. Pythagoras and the Pythagoreans believed that the number four in their system was the perfect number because of a number of different things. But one thing that they put particular attention on is the four parts of the soul, which they define as the mind, the opinion, science, and sense. These were the four parts of the soul according to that particular system. Now, back to the Holy Quran. We said that the first chapter of the Holy Quran, Al-Fatiha, the very fourth ayat is the master of the day of judgment. The fourth chapter or the fourth book rather of the Holy Quran is called Al-Nisa, which is the women. Now, we go in somewhere with this because mastery, when we talk about mastery, it's not very often that you hear women or that you hear mastery with respect to women. Generally, when you hear about mastery, you hear about men, but we can break it down from a Masonic perspective. We can break it down from Noble Drew Ali and his science. We can break it down from a number of sciences to understand that when we're talking about mastership, master builder, the master who builds life without tools, in nine months, we're talking about the divine feminine, the woman. We also know that. The Rahman represents the feminine form of creation. And that is the creation that manifested into the material world. So when we're talking about form and foundation and structure and existence and earth, the fourth element being earth, we're talking about the divine feminine. Does anybody want to chime in on that? I know a lot of people don't talk about it that way, but that's why we are here. Moving forward, the number four is also a number that deals with, as we said, Earth and mankind, mankind and womankind being physical. Four is also the number of the square. Why is that important? We talked about how the zero becomes a square with the number four. That's because in the circle, many times we talk about the circle of 360 degrees. 
the degree of the circle. When we talk about the square, it's four corners. Each of those four corners is 90 degrees. So the circle and the square are really the same in terms of degrees. It's just that the square has corners where the circle is smooth all the way around. But the degree is still the same. It's still 360 degrees. That's why we say that the number four is very much symbolized by the square because it has those 90 degree angles and it represents completion in terms of that 360 degree cycle, just like the circle does. The four also symbolizes building a strong foundation, getting that earth together, planting your feet firmly on the earth is what the four represent. There are other things that are very much attributed to the four, like the four cardinal points, north, south, east, and west. And that also very much relates to the four winds from the four directions. Also important with the number four. Also the four callops are important. And that's symbolic of the number four. Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali. May Allah be pleased with them. Also symbolic of the number four. The number four is without a doubt the most stable grounded number reflecting strength and stability. Its chief characteristics are dependability, productivity, punctuality, and obedience. Notice that was four things. It's also one that is trustworthy, patient, conventional, and detail-oriented. Also four things. The four also represents the four ventricles of the heart and the four ventricles of the brain. This is key because when we're talking about the heart and talking about the brain as well, where there's actually a mind in both. There's a mind in the, in the brain and there's a mind in the heart. The mind is not limited to one place, but this number four, is symbolic of another thing that we haven't touched on yet, which is order. Foundation is also very much symbolic of establishing order. Where there is no order, there is chaos. So that's why the four is very much symbolic of the heart because legislation of everything that takes place comes from the heart place. The example that Sheikh Sufi often mentions is when he asked us to point to ourselves, where do we point? We point to the heart because the heart is the center and it's from the center that order is established and then spirals outwardly from that center base, from that center foundation. So the heart represents the center with respect to that. That's an important point. And I want to make sure that everybody understand that as we move forward. Anyone has any questions or comments about that so far? Okay. The four also talks about square consciousness, which is really 
having a full range of consciousness or a grounded sound consciousness is what that's speaking to, which is also a symbol of law, justice, the justice system, and also, as we mentioned, order. The four is firmness, security, stability, conservatism. Not like these Republicans, but conservatism with respect to understanding what we need to conserve and how we need to conserve in the best interests of ourselves and those around us. Four also deals with measurement classification and recording is also based on the number four. An interesting fact about the number four, which I found interesting, is it is the only number where the letters of that number equal the value of that number. Can somebody tell me what that means in English? <laughs> the only number Islam. is love. Islam, I, that is just saying um, that the number four is the same as the letters that it takes to make the word for and um, you know, we we know that the alphabet is 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 just as important as the number. And mm -hmm. I also wanted to, um, wanted to comment that it's for madhabs, madhabs in Islam, schools of thought, at the Hanafi, the Maliki, the Shafi, and the Hanbali. Indeed, wow. Alhamdulillah, brother is on his game. That is correct. I had to go through this myself to really understand what this meant in terms of the four is the only number whose letters equal the value. For example, let's look at the number one. The number one is three letters, O-N-E. So three doesn't equal the number one. The number two is three letters, T-W-O. That doesn't equal the number two and on and on and on. But the number four is four letters, F-O-R-D, which is what that symbol represents and equals. So out of all the numbers, it is the only one whose letters equal the quantity of the symbol four. Lessons for number four is in terms of mastery because Whatever number we carry, we have obstacles that come with that number that we have to overcome as well. So for number four, they have to overcome or we have to overcome stubbornness, being stubborn, as well as overcoming being impractical disorderly and disorganized. The strength of the number four is structure and organization. A number four that is out of balance tends to be disorganized and disorderly and without structure. So this is how you know when that number is out of balance in your life. Number fours are very concrete and structured in what they're doing, but you don't wanna be so fixed in that structure that you actually become stubborn and unmovable with respect to what your position is. Life very much requires us to wear different hats. In the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, it talks about there's a time and a place for everything. 
and a season for everything. So there is a way and a season for us to be firm. And then there's a season or a situation or circumstances that require us to do, to be a little bit more liberal, to give a little bit. Sometimes you give an inch, sometimes you take an inch, and sometimes you stand firm. The wisdom is in knowing when to do each. The challenge for the number four is, since they are so grounded and structured, they have to learn when to yield. They have to learn when to come out of that box and operate outside of the box. And that's a lesson for mastery for the number four. Anybody have any comments about that or experience with that? Being a number four or knowing number fours? Testimonies even? Bismillah, I'll, I'll concur, Sheikh, stuck for love. All praises. I do know, I do know a couple fours, and they now that you say that they are very concrete, all praises. Stuck for love. Alhamdulillah. We got a testimony. We got an amen. Anybody else? Well, one of the things that we can look at with respect to the number four is to help maintain balance of the number four, we can utilize the attribute and the thicker of Al Malik, which of course is mastery or master, Al Mateen, and Al Malik al Mulk. These three attributes very much speak to the energy that the number four walks in. So utilize these attributes to bring balance back to the number four when you're feeling out of balance. Crystals that are successful and can be utilized with the number four is the sapphire and topaz is good also for the number four. One of the colors for the number four is blue. And the day that is assigned to the number four numerologically is Sunday and the planet Uranus is also very much assigned to the number four. And I always found that interesting because <laughs> Uranus is probably one of the most, Uranus, one of the most unique planets that we have in the sky because it's sideways. It's literally sideways. And that's the planet that represents foundation and structure and conservatism when the planet itself has attributes of being eccentric. So that's part of the balancing act with the number four. Any final comments about that four energy? If not, then I got five on it. It's time for the number five. Five is the ha. And the fifth verse of our Fatiha. Thee do we serve and thine aid do we seek. That represents the fifth verse, seeking the aid of the guide, Al Hadi. Five also represents our five senses. Hearing, seeing, touch, smell, taste, all very much related to the number five. Of course, five also represent the five pillars of Islam. 
Anybody know what the five pillars are or one of the five pillars? Bismillah, Shaykh. Uh, Shahada. Shahada is one of them. Ami, numero uno. The line. Ami, what was that one? Salat, uh, prayer. I mean, Salat. We got three more. I know they out there. Faith, Zakat, and uh, Hajj. We got the last three from the owner. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you for that. That, yeah, rounds, <laughs> that rounds out our top five. It's also spoken of with respect to the heart as well, just like number four. Five levels of the heart is significant. We have five fingers or five digits. Let's see, we talked about the senses. The meanings of the five is also tied to the petal of a flower, particularly the rose in particular. Five pointed leaves as well. All of these things are very much tied to the number five. Five is also a number of mediation because it is halfway between the one and the nine. So the, with the five, you're halfway through the journey and you're standing in a very, very balanced place. Five is also the number of adaptation, means, agency, activity, process, all of those things deal with the number five. It also represents freedom, change, and adventure. Five is a movement number. Five is an energy number. So when you see five, you know it's, it's gonna be movement. Give you an example. Person who has a life path five or is born on a five, what you might find is they have a number of addresses <laughs> throughout their life, which means they're moving to different places or constantly on the move, sometimes even going to different countries. But even if they're not moving their physical residence, you will find that they have a job or an occupation or a life path that requires them to do a lot of movement. That could be driving trucks, <laughs> that could be flight attendant or steward, or pilot, it could be somebody that's a bus driver. Anything that has to do with transportation, movement, travel, five is the number that pretty much covers that. Five also symbolizes man. It symbolizes health and love. Five is a combination of the two and the three. The two, of course, being a female number and the three is a masculine number. So five is the number of marriage, interestingly enough, because it combines those two numbers. Five also symbolizes the four limbs and the head that controls them. What's the acronym of Allah? 
I'm on somebody. Arms, leg, leg, arm, head. <laughs> I mean, I knew you knew that. What? <laughs> yes. All of those sciences are relative indeed. They're very much related. That's five energy also. We know the term of giving a high five. High five is basically raising up the five energy. That's a whole nother teaching. <laughs> but in slang gestures, we use it as giving a high five. Five also is descriptive of the number of vowels in the English language, the five vowels. When we're not using the sometimes why. <laughs> English is something else, man. <laughs> but that's important with respect to the number five. The lessons that the number five must master moving forward in this dunya, guarding against self-indulgence, establishing lasting relationships, being restless and impatient because five is about movement. So if they gotta be hunkered down somewhere, it's it's a tough situation. Got to move. But that's the energy that the five come in. So that has to be very much balanced and mastered so that our energy is not just going to and fro all over the place. And we're not just running around. We're actually traveling. And there's a difference between movement and traveling. Sufis are travelers. So we want to make sure that we are conscious of how we're moving so that our movements are not out of balance and so that our movements are actually producing a trek that gets us closer to our destination. That's the most important thing when we talk about mastery of this number five. Attributes and chants that keep that in balance is Al-Hadi, which of course the God, Duli Jalili Walikram, and Al-Rashid, also a guiding influence as well. That keeps us balanced in the number five and it keeps our guidance sharp. Crystals we can look at with the number five is the diamond and the yellow sapphire are good for the number five. Pretty much all the colors work for the number five, but grays and silvers are good with this five energy. The day for the number five is Wednesday and the planet, of course, is Mercury. So all of that energy is poured into this number five expression. Anybody want to comment on this five or know something about the five that I haven't quite gone over? Very, very important number speaks to our halfway mark. Jake, what about the Jackson Five? <laughs> oh, the Jackson Five. Because you said do re me the last class. That's why I missed it. <laughs> ABC as easy as one, two, one, three. Two, three. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, you know artists and groups often name themselves based on energies that they are aware of, or sometimes it's based on energy that the record label or owner might be aware of and put that energy on a group so that they can walk in that energy. 
Same thing with basketball teams and sometimes the way players are chosen. It's not always based on talent. People know there are certain people, let's put it that way, that know the importance of how this energy works in terms of numbers and even in terms of planets. I'm gonna date myself, but back in the day, there was a, a um, show about basketball called The Fish Who Saved Pittsburgh. Now, I know none of y'all have even heard of that. I oh, know what the I'm fish talking that about. That's Pittsburgh. Yes, I do. <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar played in it. I was a little dude. Dr. J was in there, yeah. Bar. Used to come yes. on once a year when we yep. had 310 and 13 and antenna TV. Uh, Shake Sally, do you remember what the key was? Um, the key was with all of those guys that was on that team? I can't remember. But I know you're going to remind me. As soon as you say it, it might come to me, but no, I don't remember. No. The key was. Well, was some type of hypnosis or something like that. Uh, they had them all working together. Yep. That was part of it. But okay. the reason why I had them working together is because the fish that saved Pittsburgh, all of them were Pisces. And this guy had put together a team of all Pisces. So that's why no, they know that. That's why they were able to work together like that. And that was part of the process. But yeah, there are people who know how to work this energy and put the right numbers together, the right signs together so that they can get a certain result. Or if a group comes to them, they can put that energy on that group and that group is successful based on working in that energy. So that's important with respect to understanding since you bring up the Jackson 5, they were very much walking in that energy until Mike said, you know what? I'm going to have to do this solo thing. <laughs> but... Fox was upset about that because didn't they never have more than five? When one got sick of it, they never put six in there, did they? Yep, they kept it at five. They kept They're it at always five. Always at five. I thought so. I remember. Yep. Real key. But that's how that energy moves. That's how it works. Anybody else got a comment? All right, we can go on to the number six. The number six deals with the wow. That wadud energy, that love energy. Love and wadud are the secrets of fire. Represents air and oxygen. Is the sixth element on the elemental table. Of course, we know about that six-pointed star of David or Solomon. And we also know about the six articles of faith. We also know that six is the number for the hours in a day, the two and the four. You add them together, you get a six. So six represents time. Six sides of the Kabbalah. Correction, six, six sides of the Kaaba, not the Kabbalah. It's 10 sephiroths on that bad boy. But the Kaaba has the four sides and then the top and the bottom. So that represents six as well. Allah created all things in six days. So creation took place, the actual creating part took place in six days. Six is the number of the planet Venus, which is called the goddess of love or the energy of love is tied to the planet Venus. When we look at the number six also, we talk about having a sixth sense, which was a real good movie back in the day as well. But this sixth sense is that perception above and beyond those five senses. 
it's that step above or that step beyond where we know without having the concrete physical evidence in the form of books and structures or writings or stone or eyewitness observance, without any of those things, we still have this knowing where information comes to us. And it is so intense that it is known in a place where it's actually higher than reading it in a book or seeing it somewhere where we can identify it with our five senses. It's the highest level of knowing, perceiving, being aware. That's what that sixth sense represents. Some people call it a hunch. Some people say, somebody told me. I heard somebody say, and it was the only one in the room. That kind of stuff. Sometimes you get a visual premonition of something that is going to take place or has taken place, and you know it from that place. Then later on, you begin to experience it and you know exactly what's taking place. But that's part of the representation of the number six. Let me slide down here one. So when it comes to six, it's also the atomic number for carbon. Count the number of a beast, for it is the number of a man. 603 score and six. Six, six, six. Six is the number for carbon. And carbon is that dense, dark vibration that our physical bodies are comprised of. We are carbon units. So carbon is very, very important with respect to us. In numerology, the six hold the vibration of unconditional love, protection, and sanctuary. Six represents service both to the divine and to human. Six people have a very, very open heart. Six people are helpful people, serving people. That's what the number six does. That's the energy of the number six. How can I serve? How can I help? How can I be of assistance? That's what the number six vibrate is. Lessons for the number six. Sixes have to be very careful not to be judgmental and critical of other people. That's one thing that sixes want to be cautious of. The other thing is not allowing people to abuse your kindness, take your kindness for a weakness. Because the six is so giving, so helpful and so nurturing. Sometimes people will abuse that and take advantage of that to your detriment. The energy of love and giving and service is not to be done to your detriment where you're just giving until you're depleted. Giving is always done from your excess not from your reserve, meaning you don't want to give, 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 and then you're completely depleted. You're not able to take care of yourself. You're not able to help you so that you can help others. That's the abuse and the extreme of the number six. And that you definitely have to be cautious of. 
And the mastery is learning how to guard against that so that your energy is not utilized in that way. Chance and thickness for the number six is Al Wadud, Al Kareem, and Al Ba. Colors, blues, rose, pink, and red vibrate well with the number six, whose day is Friday and planet is Venus. Any questions, comments about this number six vibration? I know we got some sixes in the house. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wow, um, alaikum salam. Six, I find this number to be very, very interesting because, well, I was born in the nation of Islam and many years ago, we looked at six uh, with kind of like a negative connotative I, um, because we were taught it, it represented the number of incompletion. And when you brought up 666, you know, that was like <laughs> the number to really stay away from. But now studying numerology, if we were to add those three sixes, that would equate to a nine. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to understand what is the, why is it still kind of looked at as a negative more so than a positive, especially what it has to do with the carbon factor. I'm just, <laughs> if you, if you follow me, I, I'm just curious and it's been kind of mind boggling for me for quite a few years, really, that, with this number six. That is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful question. And I will answer it this way. First, when it comes to a lot of the things that we were taught in religion, mm -hmm. a lot of the things we were taught in religion was to frighten us away from certain things. And one of those numbers that was used that was seen as quote unquote evil is the number six, mm -hmm. because it represents of course the number of the beast. When you're talking about the carbon, the carbon obviously is dark, mm -hmm. the darkest of dark. And again, Going back to religion, anything that's dark is considered evil. evil. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a higher understanding of a number and a lower understanding of a number. Most of the time, we've been given the lowest mm -hmm. of the low mm -hmm. <laughs> understanding of a number. So particularly with respect to this number six, Carbon represents where everything comes from. And going back to the void, carbon represents the divine feminine or the darkness or the womb from which everything comes. So you have beings here that consider that to be evil and wicked because you have people here who have a very, very negative idea of what woman is and what the divine feminine is. And to be very blunt, there is a hatred for women yes, and absolutely. a hatred for the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the number six representing love and unconditional love and giving, that's not something that is looked at by some people as being a positive trait when you're living on the opposite end of that and you're terrorizing and you're seeking to have control over everything. 
and you don't want people to be nurtured. You want them to be under your thumb. Six becomes negative in that connotation because it's representative of carbon and of giving and of the divine from which we all came. But if I have a hatred for those things, then six becomes a very, very evil number mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And I assign that number to beastly things. Mm. But there is a higher expression of that number six, which is what we just described. So when they talk about in the nation, the number six being a number that is incomplete because seven is the number of creation, which we'll get into starting on next week. Creation was actually done in six days. <laughs> So it's not really incomplete. Right. It is the completion of creation. Mm -hmm. The seventh day was the day of rest after creation. But the creation cycle, you can say is seven days, but the actual process was so six, six days. Eight. Right, right. So I think that's the part that they miss. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, uh, that makes much sense to me. I also was looking at being that my symbol is a triangle, like you have uh, the apex at the top and then it comes out at the bottom. But if you flip that, or even looking at the Star of David, you would get like six, six, if you flip that triangle and then the six at the bottom, mm -hmm. those would be the three sixes. And looking at the top part, of that triangle representing the higher self. And then that apex flipped upside down representing the lower self. I don't know, sister. Sound like you talk about some devil worship. Yeah. And so what I'm what I'm looking at is how they use symbols a lot of times. Uh, and they flip things upside down exactly that you know really are supposed to be the opposite way and really are supposed to rep you know it's supposed to represent something of light and positiveness but they have a tendency to turn things upside down so I think that um I don't know I I, I always look that when I see that star of David I always see like representing maybe like a higher self and lower self. Mm, perfect. And yet it's made out of two triangles, which to me are the pyramids. Absolutely. And, and then each one, you know, just trying to figure it out. As I said, it's always been um, a bit confusing. So. You're absolutely but, correct. You're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. That's so, how a lot of these sciences has gotten perverted. Yes. Like we talk about numerology, the way that it's been cast and how negative that is. And that's the working of the devil and witchcraft. And same thing mm -hmm. with astrology and all those things. You're talking about the symbol of um, the Star of David. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it speaks to. One triangle upright represents above Mm -hmm. And the other triangle that's pointed down represents that which is below. Now, there have people who have come along and have taken the as above, so below, and they turned that into something that's wicked. Right. But that's not the original intent of what that symbol mm -hmm. represents. That symbol represents what we learn in the Bible, what Jesus said, thy kingdom come on earth as, as it, it is, is in heaven. heaven. Right. That right. which is above, we want to see it Stay down here. here on earth. Absolutely. So it's talking mm -hmm. about the relationship between heaven and earth, the mm -hmm. relationship between the spiritual self and the physical self. Right. I'm not saying that the physical self is evil, mm -hmm. but it is opposite or opposite in extremes of the spiritual self. It's the spiritual energy slowed down to the point that it becomes physical. It's not mm -hmm. evil. 
Right. But right. it's two different things. Mm -hmm. The same thing, but in two different expressions is a better way to put it. That's, that's right. what these symbols are talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the key is to find the balanceness between right. the two. Mm -hmm. The balance. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's supposed to represent, balancing the two. Mm -hmm. So that you can experience heaven even as you walk the earth. That's right. <laughs> that's the key. Absolutely. Well, shukran for that. Thank Much you. clarification. I'm glad you brought that forward. Yes. Okay, salam. Salam. Say Idris Ba. Yes, sir. It made me think when y'all was reasoning, we know Islam, well, everybody don't know what Islam is mathematics, mathematics is Islam. None of the numbers are evil. Yes. Like, like you BT, we have to separate, you know, belief or religion from science. You know, it's different stages, but. Right. And you know how we got um, fire. Fire, we like, you know, we cook food with it. Um, fire warm you up. So it's like knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, what I'm getting to say, it's all about how you apply it. None of it is easy. Right. If I take fire, set the house on fire, that's misuse. Right. You know what I mean? So they, they, they had us a little confused. Like you say, 666, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Wilson Reagan and all that. As we was coming on the stage. Oh, you league. remember that? Yeah, I remember all that stuff like that. Like that. You might get with the guards, they'd be like, man, you got to deal with the size of six, man. You know, they got people under the spell of it. You know, so all of it is neutral. Just like they'd be mm -hmm. like masonry. Mm -hmm. When we study the real science of masonry is really Islam. They're dealing with astronomy and astronomy and the sciences and linguistics and rhetoric. Mm -hmm. You know, the different, the, the different arts and sciences. But the way it's applied, the way they're using it, they're using it against the people. So right. everything is actually neutral. Another good I... example of how they flip that, look yeah. at the swastika. Right, another it's example. Mm -hmm. Just like the Star mm -hmm. David ain't even a Star David. They just they claim that for them as, so we look at it religiously, but the sister was writing his act when she say, it's a up pyramid, down pyramid. She like, right. I'm not, nah, sister, you was writing his act. Right and exact. <laughs> Right and exact. Well, I was thinking they just spooked us out with certain things, you know. Right. Stay away from this, stay away from that. You know, but as you grow, like Islam revealed in stages, you, you, you can separate that which, you know, as a child, we say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That worked for the babies. We don't throw that away. But if I right. tried to read now using that concept, I'd be all confused. It's like law and love. The law, where, 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 where they, they say, well, um, spirituality is missing you need morality so we set law that should not kill that should not steal but when mm -hmm. you go into love you just don't do those things just for the sake of because you love right because it's a it's a riot and now you'd be like i'm going to break in this store tonight you gonna still stay in the house when you really love you like i don't steal i don't got time to take nothing don't belong to me whether it's free for all or not mm -hmm. so with that i say peace i just wanted to add on to the site peace. thank you for that and that's right on point because you talked about those Letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The next level of that is what do each of those letters mean to you? And just like was done in the science of gods and earth, there was a word attached to each one of those alphabets that was utilized. So when you saw the A, you knew exactly what that related to, Allah, etc. Each of us have to, whenever we see a letter, we have to begin to put together our own alphabet of understanding of what the A represents to us, what the B represents to us. This is what they did with this alphabet that they gave to us. They just gave us symbols with no meaning. Now we have to attach meaning to those symbols. And that is what was done and what was started with respect to that knowledge coming out of the 5%. But it doesn't stop, it continues. And each of us have to continue that based on what our individual journey is 
what do each one of these alphabetic letters or symbols mean for me? What word would I attach to that symbol? Same science with numerology. What does the one mean to me? How do I see that manifested around me or in those around me? What about the number eight? What does that mean to me personally? What does that mean with respect to what's taking place in my environment? Who do I see manifesting the attributes of that symbol? We have to begin to take what we're given and what we have been given and use that information every day. And what's gonna start happening is we're gonna start seeing these numbers popping up around us. It's not like they weren't always there. They were always there. We just weren't aware or paying attention to them in our environment. And as we move on through class, I'm gonna show you an example of that, of just how important that is in terms of observing, particularly with respect to numbers and how that could really give you insight to what's taking place in and around you. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments about that? Or about these numbers that we've learned so far? Jake, this is my last one. When you said 5% who teach who the true and living God is, and then Orca Ayeshe had said the arm, leg, leg, arm, head, the five. Would that have anything to do with the 5% who know who God is, you know, it's a five. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't mean to go backwards, but when you said the five, percent made me think the 5%. <laughs> Orca Ayeshe had said the arm, leg, leg, arm, head. I know we're all six, but. That's I wouldn't song, even say it if you want to say it five percent. <laughs> <laughs> You're right on it. That's very much, very much in line with that five energy. Think about it. When we're talking about the five percent, they were also travelers. They were also dealing with, not was, are also dealing with Sufi concepts. They were also about motion moving along, each one teach one, keeping the energy moving, keeping the cipher moving, keeping the conversation moving. It's a movement energy dealing with that number five. So yes, you're right on it. It does relate to the number five. If thanks, just curious, if thanks. Thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts, comments, or questions? Number issues or a number of issues? <laughs> I know we all got that. Everybody clear on how to balance and utilize the thickers and the crystals and colors? to help balance out your energy and balance out your mood. Because sometimes wearing the right colors, putting on the right music, understanding what day it is and what influences over that day, all of those things could be very, very helpful in terms of establishing the right frame of mind, getting in the right mood so that you feel right and that helps you to move right. Is that making sense? Turn four. Absolutely. Ah, mean. If there are no more questions or comments, next week, we will be diving into the seven, the eight, and the nine. <clears throat> then we doing the master numbers. And you are going to be learning all of your core numbers in the next three weeks after that. Until the end of the class, we're going to be working with 
your number so that you know your actual coded process that's working within you. And you began to know how to utilize those numbers to your advantage to bring you balance and to align with the path that you're here to walk on and help you to be much more productive in your Muslim walk, your Sufi walk, your understanding of the divine by knowing your numbers and the numbers that are important to you. I wanted to go over all of these numbers because we are all of these numbers from the zero to the nine, every last one of them. And we have to learn how to master and balance the influences and the vibrations, the frequency, the energy that comes forth as a result of all of these symbols moving through us and around us so that we can be successful. That's our divine responsibility. And if we're not doing that, then we're not really doing our job. Yes, there are people that kept us off of our course and off of our path and have obstructed us from doing our job. But now that we know that, now we take ownership. Going back to that number four, we take ownership from that heart space and we begin to determine based on what we have been given as our divine birthright, which is this information and this science to utilize for the betterment of ourselves and those around us. That's how we make the most of ourselves and be productive as we walk this path. It would be a shame to get to the end of our life and to have not understood these sciences that was with us the whole time because somebody else kept us away from them. But you best believe that in the background, in these dark rooms, in these systems of government around the clock, they are using these sciences that they learn from us. And they don't want us using it. One, because we're the ones that originated it. But two, because if we understand it from the sacred divine place that it comes, they would not be able to control us. That's why this is important. And that's why each and every one of us is important because we have something to bring to the table based on what we have working in us and through us. Any final comments or thoughts? Well, Sheikh Idris Ba, I'll leave you with one more then. Since, remember how they say 32, you're 33, you're throwing out, right? That's right. It's true. That's but right. We also know it's 33 vertebrae. <laughs> <laughs> That 33 so equals a 33, six, though. Four times, only deal with 360, if I'm not mistaken, something like, I'm going to leave that alone, yeah. But this <laughs> is what, how they have people scared, like, oh, they're dealing with evil. They put that veil out there, but when you know yourself, you'll actually know that we founded those systems. If I'm not mistaken, it was a great Sufi called, um, what his name was? Noon. Do Noon. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. or the black one they call it yeah and they say when you get high enough you can you get high enough in certain degrees of masonry and it's a sufi group called the builders you'll see that masonry comes from the sufi group the builders so when they say they don't know where masonry come from when you get into true sufism and tazawu you'll find the root of a lot of everything that the woolly head ones the sufis as i heard sheikh Taj tariq bay say all come from cyber, Sufi culture, the woolly head one. Yeah. All the way. So I'm gonna leave that alone. That's all you You're right on it. Out. You're right on it. Yeah. But we founded those sciences. We the original people. And now it's time you, to take Shea back Idris ownership. Ba. I love you, Shay Egypt, Bob.
Oh, I love you, Shay. I love all of y'all, but just the easiest part of bringing up mathematical Islam. Make it plain. I mean. Thank you for making it plain for us, because, yeah, we got to take, this is the time that we take back ownership of these sciences, first within ourselves. It's not necessary for us to, you know, go out and try and convince somebody of anything that don't want to be convinced. But it's first for us to begin to take back these sciences within ourselves. And then we will draw to us those that are ready to go deeper into these sciences. That's the key. For some reason, I'm feeling biblical tonight. The words say, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift it up. How is one lifted up? The only way you can be lifted up is into knowledge. Lift it up into a higher understanding. And as you elevate in understanding, then you develop a drawing power, a magnetic influence and energy where the same type of people who are ready to go up as well will be drawn to you. A simple way of saying this is the law of attraction, but that doesn't really speak to the science that's actually behind what that means, because they're just talking about getting some stuff. We're talking about elevating in consciousness and spiritual development on this path of Tasawuf, this Sufi path, so that we can be one with the one. The more we grow up into that, the more we're able to draw people around us who will go with us on that journey. And that's what this Dara is all about. That's what each one of us represent in this Dara. Any more questions or comments? One joke. It's snake evil too. <laughs> By all They'll make means, everything evil. <laughs> that's that serpent in the garden. Well, you flip it all backwards, wouldn't that be life? Live. Like yeah. I heard Uncle Becca Midnight say, he said he'd be flipping the words in English. He was like, love backwards is evolved. I mean, so as we love, we evolve and grow. God is give thanks, man. Give thanks. Give thanks. I mean, I mean, I mean. Any more thoughts, comments, last call? Well, if there are no more, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in the place this weekend. Man, we gonna be on fire. It's going to be a wonderful time for each of us. And I know Sheikh Sufi is looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm packing tonight <laughs> so that I'm ready to be in the place at the appointed time. And I can't wait to see all of these lights of wisdom and just be in the energy of everybody that's ready to be drawn up even higher and higher into that divine place. If there are no more questions or comments, I'm gonna ask the great sister Ayeshe if she would give us a divine doer as only she could if she's available. as we close out and make ready to be in the Georgia mountains. Yes, my brother, Shaky Dreams, I'm available whenever you call me, I must answer. <laughs> I thank you for that. Whenever you all are ready. Me. I do believe in the Shaitan Rajin, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. 
We come to you on this evening to thank Allah for his presence, to thank Allah for presenting his presence even in numbers. We thank Allah for being with us throughout the day. We thank Allah for allowing us to recognize who we are in him or her. We thank Allah for gathering us together. This is a special occasion. We gather together yearly in Georgia. And it's a it's an experience like no other for us to match faces with voices, match faces with pictures that we have on the Zooms and in the class, and faces with, with phone numbers that we receive speaking of numbers. We just want to thank Allah for always extending his knowledge and wisdom to us. We thank Allah for those who participate in class. We give a special shout out to Sheikh Sally, who's always attending and always adding. You know, he put the he put the cherry on top in every class, and we appreciate oh, that. We thank Allah for Sheikh Idris Bar because this is his calling, and I don't think anyone else could bring it the way he does. He's so confident and comfortable, you know, with the knowledge that he has given us. He mm -hmm. makes it so plain. He helps us to erase our fears from the false teachings that were presented to us from the Caucasians. Amen. We thank you so much for every heart that is drawn here. I'm asking the Dara to continue to support our shakes. It's not easy to come up with this information and make sure it's right and exact, like we are taught in the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam have some of the best researchers, undoubtedly. You don't want to go into a debate with them. And I, I think a lot because we have some members here that have that knowledge from the Nation of Islam as well. I just thank Allah for Sheikh Sufi Ba because he's open to allow us to receive different knowledge and apply it to our lives. Because, you know, there are many truths in life and we have to acknowledge and honor them and pay homage to those truths. I thank Allah for Sheikh Amadou Bamba, who has brought us full circle. Sheikh Wali made a statement to me and he said, you know, we left the nation not even knowing that when we came amongst the Sufi circle that we was coming into completion. Mm. And that was a powerful statement. So I thank Allah for Sheikh Amadou Bamba. I thank Allah for Sheikh Ibrahim, who was his right-hand man, kind of like Sheikh Zulu and Sheikh Boatman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Sheikh Boatman, he... Uh, protects the pathway of Sheikh Zulu. And we have to do that for our Sheikhs and for our Sheikhs. And speaking of that, I think a lot for Sheikh Azima. We got to give it up for her. That's just the oh, work really? hard, um, not even knowing she was going to be given that title. And it's a blessing because in everything, you're supposed to have a feminine aspect of it. Yes. Even when you go to the elders of the tribes, there's always a woman that's on the board because it has to bring a balance like we taught in the Maya. So I thank again, Sheikh Idris Ba for showing us even the femininity in these numbers that we're studying and that we are learning. And that could be so long in it, but I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm ready for travel to Georgia because I'll be able to see all my family in person. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. We can yeah. feel each other's vibration. Oh my sure. God, the vibration, the frequency, the frequency, speaking the numbers again, the frequency is going to be so high when all these numbers come together. I'm telling you, you can't give nothing but praise. It's going to be an astronomical experience. So I ask that Allah give us all travel and mercies, that we all get there safely, and mm -hmm. that the mission of Sheikh Amadou Bamba is even more extended on the mountaintop. We're supposed to be meeting up in the mountains. We're going to be on high ground. We're going to ground our feet to the ground. Yes. We're going to meet Mother Nature. We're going to touch planet Earth. We're going to do all that. We're going to watch the stars of the universe. Let me tell you something. When we come together, we don't sleep for three days because we be so excited in the spirit yes. of Allah. So I just want to thank Allah for that in advance. I'm thanking him that we're going to have a victorious 
retreat. I'm thanking him because when we go there as caterpillars, we're going to leave as butterflies. I'm just so grateful and I am so thankful. And even those who are not able to make it there in person, I ask that the Lord will send your spirit there. We're going to still be as one. We're going to still be as one. That's right. So I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for this moment. I'm grateful for life today. And we ask all of these things, all of these blessings, all of these barricades, and all the prophets' names. I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean, I mean. I mean. I mean. That was a magnificent door. That was a door by a door. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. I mean, thank you so much for that, sister. Look forward to seeing you and everyone on this coming weekend. Safe travels. Keep your spirits up. Keep your energy up. Don't let this dunya drag you down. And no matter how you got to get there, just get there. And you'll be feeling so much better once you get there and depart from there. I will see you all in the elevated place. Assalamu alaikum. Wallahi wa alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam.